Welcome to Sixwinds Turbo Router 3.0 webinar, spotlighting our vRouter's new feature release. I'm your host, Kelly LeBlanc, in charge of Sixwinds Worldwide Marketing and Business Development Departments. Joining me is Sixwind VP of Product Management, Jan Rapoport. Jan will share a demo of our VPN concentrator use case with Turbo Router 3.0. Then we reserve time at the end for Q&A. Let's get started. First, let me introduce Sixwind. Sixwind was founded in 2000 and based in France, very close to Paris with offices in the US and China. We are networking software performance experts with a pedigree in serving the world's largest networks through software. All of our employees are focused on providing infrastructure software for white box networking. We have several strong financial and strategic investors from the US and Europe. Here's a list of some of our key customers, many of which are brand names in the networking and applications market. Many networking companies such as Cisco, Nokia, NEC, Nuage, and more have been using our software for over a decade. Service providers and enterprises such as Arbor Networks, AT&T, OVH and Viasat use our vRouters to build their networks and services. The combination of six wind software and commercial off the shelf servers gives you a powerful alternative to Cisco and other incumbent hardware. And we do this 100% through software. Six wind software allows you to easily deploy popular networking applications on commercial off the shelf servers. It is easy to integrate on these white box servers through a simple software download either bare metal in virtual machines or public clouds. And Sixwin is proven as our software has been deployed within brand name customers for two decades. Today we are introducing our newly released Sixwin Turbo Router 3.0 with new features and functionality. Turbo Router is Sixwin's flagship V router or virtual router that is becoming the industry standard to replace hardware routers with software. The new Sixwind Turbo Router 3.0 release includes Turbo IPsec and Turbo CGNAT software packages with license options according to capacity requirements. IP routing features are included in the base Turbo Router network license configuration, and Turbo IPsec and Turbo CGNAT features are added through application licenses. Throughput, number of tunnels, and number of connections can be added and increased as needed. No software reboots are required when you change features or capacity. Sixwinds vRouter 3.0 release is diff delivered in different flavors that allow you to replace very popular hardware-based applications with software on commercial off-the-shelf servers and virtual machines. Sixwind Turbo Router delivers 16 million packets per second, which is 20 gigabits per second of routing performance per processor core. It includes all of the necessary features to route and manage traffic, such as IPv4 and IPv6 routing, BGP, OSPF, filtering, and more. Sixwind Turbo Router's most popular application is a border router for internet service providers. On a COT server, you can support multiple full internet routes and over a million routes, bringing similar or even greater performance versus incumbent hardware. If you require secure encrypted traffic, simply add the IPsec VPN license. This license adds high performance IPsec VPN tunnel functionality with 18 gigabits per second of encrypted traffic performance per processor core and over 1000 tunnels established per second, all in software. This allows up to 50,000 secure tunnels on a single server. Popular applications include VPN concentrators, and virtualized applications within UCPE devices. If you are working on IPv4 preservation and IPv6 migration projects, simply add the CGNAT license. We deliver 30 million simultaneous connections, which is only limited by the memory in your server configuration. I will detail each of these application use cases shortly. Sixwind Turbo Router software is an alternative to legacy incumbent hardware-based routers. We have the same features and similar, if not better performance with no interest in vendor lock-in. We are completely open to any commercial off-the-shelf server hardware that customers select to complete their server configuration. 
Here you can see details on the specific features we provide for routing IPsec and CGNAT, including management, system requirements, network interface cards, and a performance summary. Now for deployment options. We have two main deployment options. The first is deployed bare metal through a simple software download. The second is within virtual machines. Within VMs, there are two options with varying levels of performance. The first is on top of standard open source hypervisor infrastructure using OpenVSwitch or Linux Bridge with hypervisor options including Linux KVM, VMware ESXi, and Amazon Web Services. The second leverage is hypervisor bypass technologies such as SRIOV or PCI pass-through, which dedicate hardware resources to virtual machines for the highest performance, but loses some of the benefits of virtualization, such as live migration. We give you these different deployment options so that you can make incremental software upgrades for your cloud transition. Remember, it's the same 6 win software for bare metal or virtual deployments. 6Win vRouter management is state-of-the-art. It provides both traditional CLI-based management and IT-style management based on automation and integration with high-level orchestration tools. For this, 6Win vRouter proposes a Yong-based NetConf API. Configuration can happen through the standard CLI and APIs for integration with third-party management tools and orchestrators. Our data models leverage Yong and are therefore easily understandable and extensible. For deployment, we provide packaged images for bare metal, KVM, VMware, and AWS, and leverage the Linux cloud init features that enable the customization of day one configuration at startup, including initial networking configuration, default users, custom software packages, and configuration files. Finally, for monitoring, we support the traditional SNMP and syslog mechanisms, plus telemetry through SFLOW and graphical analytics with time series database. We have pre-integrated the vRouter with InfluxDB and Grafana, which are standard open source time series database and analytics software. Our integration and default Grafana dashboards are available on GitHub for the community to download and extend. Now for our border router use case. Sixwinds Turbo Router has been replacing Cisco ASR1000 series routers and additional incumbent routers with our vRouter software on COT servers for many ISP customers for several years now. We are able to do this because of our software performance, features, and management, which are designed specifically for border router use cases. Depending on the ISP size, scalability and throughput requirements vary. It is common for a border router to handle 10 gigabits per second of routing, multiple BGP full internet routes due to redundancy, and BGP multi-homing. BGP conver convergence times and fast route lookups are also critical items. Our next use case is the VPN concentrator, as illustrated within our service provider customer example. Here, AT&T, which is the largest Tier 1 service provider in the U.S. uses Sixwinds vRouter as a VPN concentrator for its enterprise VPN service called VVIG, or Virtual VPN Internet Gateway. Our Turbo IPsec vRouter is used to aggregate the IPsec traffic from enterprise users. As a result of using our Turbo IPsec on a commercial off-the-shelf server, AT&T was able to reduce direct capex by 70% and support IPsec clients of all types and thousands of IPsec tunnels. The next use case is CGNAT, or carrier-grade NAT. With a simple CGNAT application license added to 6Win Turbo Router, you can solve IPv4 preservation and IPv6 migration challenges on COT servers as another alternative to Cisco routers. Carrier-grade NAT helps ISPs with IPv4 con resource conservation by sharing an outside IP address among multiple inside local private IP addresses. Benefits include the ability to use a pool of public IP addresses instead of one, the ability to limit resource usage per user, in addition to transparent translation schemes. With 6Win CGNAT software, more than 30 million concurrent sessions are supported with a creation rate of 200,000 sessions per second. 
Now I want to share a new use case that we recently announced with service provider customer WITCOM and partners Adva, Advantech, Decoso, and Dell. You may have read the news earlier this month in Fierce Telecom. IoT infrastructure is an emerging use case that we're starting to see alongside topics such as 5G. Here, our Turbo IPsec application license is selected to run as a VNF within the UCPE devices, stationed at the traffic lights on the left-hand side and in the data center on the right-hand side. We provide connectivity with end-to-end -end IPsec VPN tunnels over private and public networks with firewalling and encryption. You can see our IPsec V router on the right side running as VPN concentrators both for data and management. Here we service a growing number of verticals, including transportation and mobility, retail, banking, healthcare, and more. Here's a summary of our Turbo Router 3.0's network and application licenses. For the base feature set that addresses the border router use cases, you can scale from 1 gig to 200 gig. To add IPsec for the VPN concentrator and UCPE use, use cases we spoke about, you have options from 1,000 to 50,000 tunnels. And then to add CGNAT, you have options from 1 million to 30 million simultaneous connections. And remember, this is all in flexible software. You can add features and capacity as needed without any reboots. Here are some example server configurations for use with 6Win vRouter software products. We have collected this information from actual customer feedback and data. We begin our Turbo Router network licenses according to throughput. The 1 gig software licenses are popular for UCPE, and the 10 gig software licenses are popular for border routers, CGNAT, and VPN concentrators. With 6Win vRouters, performance increases are possible through a simple license key update. We support Intel Atom and Xeon processors and Intel Broadcom and Mellanox network and interface cards. For higher performance, our customers have deployed these server configurations for 25 gig, 40 gig, and 100 gig vRouter software licenses. Again, these are just suggestions. If you don't see your preferred server on this list, just ask. Now it's time for our VPN concentrator demo. I will now turn it over to Jan. Thank you, Kelly. This is our demo platform with the VPN concentrator sitting at the edge of the enterprise headquarters. Remote workers and enterprise subsidiary sites open IPsec tunnels towards the VPN concentrator for a secure connection to the enterprise resources. The VPN concentrator is composed of two Turbo IPsec instances. They are working in high availability mode with VRRP for redundancy and IKEHA for seamless failover thanks to the continuous synchronization of IPsec security policies and associations. The cluster is monitored using the Grafana visualization tool. We run each vRouter instance on five cores, 10 threads of a dual socket platform equipped with Intel Xeon Platinum 8170 CPUs running at 2.10 GHz. Each instance is allocated 8 GB of RAM. We use, we use an Ixia XM2 traffic generator to inject traffic at high rate, and we emulate up to 10K remote IPsec connections thanks to strong SWAN load tester tool running on a separate platform. Let's now switch to our demo. Let's start by reviewing the VPN concentrator configuration using the CLI on the first VPN concentrator called VPNC1. Using the show config command, we start by reviewing system information. We can see the host name, vpnc1.vpnc.6.com, and the dimensioning of the vRouter high performance packet processing engine called the Passpath. We see that two NICs and four cores are assigned to the first path for this test.
we can then dump the interfaces showing a management interface, one interface to the one, one to the one, one interface for high availability synchronization, and the VRP interface is used for redundancy. With this configuration, we will be able to demonstrate up to 10 gigabit per second of traffic in both directions, or in other words, 20 gigabit per second of IPsec processing. Now let's check the routing configuration. In this case, it is very simple with static routes configured to send clear flows towards the XR. Next comes the IPsec configuration itself. We can see the general options tuning the capacity of the IPsec stack, the VPN configured with security policies for the XR for throughput and the load tester tool for tunnel establishment, as well as pre-shared key used to authenticate IKE exchanges. The configuration of this VPN relies on templates that define the parameters of the IKE phase one and phase two negotiations, including Diffie-Hellman group, encryption and authentication algorithms, wiki time, replay window size, and more. In this test, we use AES GCM with a key size of 128 bits for the IPsec ESP encryption. We can check the equivalent configuration in XML format on the second VPN concentrator used for high availability. This is what a NetConf client would send to the vRouter to configure it in a programmatic way. We see the same information, including routes, interfaces, IKE templates, VPN and security policies, etc. Back on VPN C1, let's check the status of the interfaces. We can see that the IP addresses are properly configured, including the VRP interfaces, meaning that VPN C1 is the master for the high availability cluster. Let's now switch to the XR traffic generator. This is the IX network UI, where we can see the different flows. There are eight flows configured in each direction using two 10 gig ports. The throughput indicated by the XR gauges is for clear traffic. When encapsulated with IPsec, the packet size and therefore the throughput increase. With the algorithms used in this demo, 20 gigabit per second of IPsec traffic correspond to 18.9 gigabit per second of clear traffic throughput. Let's start the traffic. We see that 18.906 gigabit per second of clear traffic can be processed without any packet loss, which means that we achieve 20 gigabit per second of IPsec processing. While the traffic is running, we can dump the packets on VPN C1 to verify that they are encrypted using ESP. Let's now have a look at the key performance indicators in the CLI. These key performance indicators include product information, such as license and version, system information, such as CPU or memory usage, networking statistics, and others. These are streamed from the vRouter to the InfluxDB time series database and displayed in the Graphene Analytics dashboard to better analyze the dynamics of the system. Here in the dashboard for VPN C1, we see the status of the system, including CPU usage in Linux and in the vRouter's fast path. We see that we reach the link capacity for the one interface when IPsec packets flow. And a bit down the screen, the IPsec ASA and SP reflect the 16 security policies and associations used to protect Scrolling through the dashboard, we can also see process usage, user count, and disk usage. Let's now check the IPsec state in detail using the CLI. We can dump all IKE VPNs to review their status and the corresponding peers IP address and fully qualified domain names. 
the total number of VPNs can also be displayed. When needed, we can filter the output on a specific peer for debug purposes. The detailed output includes the state of the security associations, the local and remote endpoints, the lifetime of the security associations, statistics in bytes, in packets, and more. The show log command allows to review the sequence of IKE events, and it can be filtered out for a specific peer. Let's now demonstrate tunnel establishment rate. Our screen is split between the CLI on VPN C1 on the top and the load tester command line on the bottom. Load tester is a tool from the StrongSwan open source project that can simulate the connections of IPsec clients at high rate. The VPN count on VPN C1 is eight when we start the load tester tool. As connections start establishing, we can see the VPN count increase on VPN C1. In Grafana, the IPsec Security Association and Security Policy graphs show us the IPsec connections being established until 20K SAs and SPs are reached, which corresponds to our objective of 10K IPsec tunnels. We see on the graph that the XR traffic is still going through at wire speed. So we have just demonstrated that we can maximize the capacity of a full duplex 10 gigabit per second link with IPsec traffic while establishing up to 10K tunnels. Let's now check high availability. This is another graph and a dashboard where we see a high level status of the redundant instances of the VPN concentrator. Both are active and in good shape. We can see from the FastPass CPU usage graph that VPN C1 is the active instance processing the IPsec traffic. FastPass CPUs are inactive on VPN C2, but we will see that the IKE sessions are synchronized and VPN C2 is ready to take over traffic in case VPN C1 fails. Our screen is split between the CLI consoles on VPN C1 on the left and VPN C2 on the right. The VRP configuration and state show that VPN C1 is the VRP master and VPN C2 is the slave. The VRP interfaces on VPN C1 bear the virtual IP address of the cluster, while there are no IP addresses on the VRP interfaces on VPN C2. This is for link redundancy. Regarding IKE sessions, the high availability configuration shows the group, the synchronization interface, and the peers addresses that are used to continuously synchronize the IKE sessions between the active and inactive systems. We can see that 10K plus eight IKE VPNs are configured on both sides. They have been synchronized on VPN C2 while they were established using load tester on VPN C1. We will now trigger an activity SWACT by setting down the interface connected to the LAN interface on VPN C1. This will cause VRP to change states and VPN C2 to take over traffic. We can see from the CLI that VPN C1 is now backup and VPN C2 has become master. The VIPs of the VRP cluster are now configured on VPN C2 for both LAN and WAN interfaces. Back to the Grafana overview dashboard, VPNC2's FastPass CPUs are now loaded 
indicating that the IPsec processing has been taken over. On the other hand, FastPass CPU usage on VPNC1 is zero. Looking at the detailed dashboard on VPNC1, it is clear that traffic is not being processed as the throughput of the interface is zero. On VPNC2, on the other hand, the throughput is 20 gigabit per second, meaning that traffic has properly been taken over thanks to the already established VPNs when the activity switch occurred. This concludes our demo. As you can see, we offer tremendous value in software for VPN concentrator solutions. To conclude, we have demonstrated how SixWinds vRouter can be deployed on a standard off-the-shelf server as a VPN concentrator to terminate 10K IPsec tunnels, maximizing throughput on a 10 gigabit per second link, and providing redundancy and seamless failover all this being monitored in a graphical environment. In our demo, we used five cores per VPN concentrator instance and eight gigabytes of RAM, knowing that throughput scales with the number of cores and number of tunnels scales with memory. And now back to you, Kelly. Thank you, Jan. That was an excellent demo. Now it's time for questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer your questions in the order that they are received. I can see we have a couple coming in now, so let's start with the first one. The first question is, can I use the same SixWin Turbo Router 3.0 software for the border router, CG NAT, and VPN concentrator use cases? Okay, the answer is yes. You just need to select the features and capacity that you require for your use case, and then download the software. You make the changes to the features and capacity as you need without rebooting the software. It's that simple. Okay, the second question is, what are the upcoming features of the vRouter for VPN use cases? Okay, another great question. So we plan to complete our offering with dynamic multipoint VPN and open VPN support in our next release this year. Okay, it looks like we've answered all of the questions right now. So I want to thank everyone for joining today's webinar. If you would like to evaluate our Turbo Router 3.0, simply fill out the evaluation form on our website. We look forward to hearing from you. Bye for now.